Indexes are a common concept across many different data stores. While their implementation in the data store may vary, they are used to make lookups based on a column or set of columns more efficient. By convention, an index is created in each property or set of properties that are used as a foreign key. And the reason why we use indexes in, in any type of database management system for specific columns by indexing specific properties, it allows for an efficiency and performance of your queries to associate those specific items that you want to pull back into your web page. We're all about creating efficiency and performance inside of our different web apps. In EF Core, there's different ways to implement indexes. One key difference between the implementation of indexes on our data structure and entities is that you cannot implement it via data annotation. Indexes can only be implemented utilizing the Fluent API inside of the onModelCreating method. So we can come over here and let's say to our person class right here that we have, we can pick the first name property associated right here and make it a specific index. So when we pull back a query, this item is indexed to whatever changes we want to associate. So right here, we pick first name just as an example. So we can come over here, model builder, entity. We're going to say person. And inside of that, we want to say has an index. And then we want to associate what property has that index. So we want to say here. And we want to say first name which we're associating right here. So now we're saying that first name has an index and it configures an index on a specific property. If there's an existing index on that given set of properties, then the existing index will be returned for the configuration. This is a way we can set an index for a specific property utilizing the Fluent API. You can also state that if this value is unique or not. So typically you don't want to set an index on a property like in this case, first name. So we can come back in here and say, you know what? I want person key to be the property that is unique. So I can come over here and let's just copy this. And we can come in here and we can change this. And then we can put on top of that, the method is unique. And this configures whether the index is unique or not. And right there, we can associate that. And now we have whether it's unique or not associated with the person key, which is the primary key that we want to index. You can associate this with one column or multiple columns. So the other way you can do this, instead of just having person key or first name separate, you can also override it and make it where it's multiple. We could put right here multiple. So right now we have multiple column index. We can come over here and do the model builder again. And instead, we can just make entity. We're going to have the person again. And then we're going to put has index. And in the has index, we can come over here and we can say X. And then we can make it here new. And we can have multiple columns here. So we can say X dot person key x dot first name so you can always have indexes to associate with multiple columns inside of your entity context right here so this is a way to implement multiple indexes for your person key and first name inside of your entity and in this case we're implementing it with the person entity remember there's only one index per distinct set of properties you can always utilize this fluent api to configure an index on a set of properties that already has an index. So in this case, we've demonstrated how to have one property indexed, also how to have, in this case, the person key, which is our primary key, being unique. So it always has to have a unique value associated with it. And then in this case, we're also associating multiple column indexing with our primary key person key, also with the first name column.